Welcome into another video in my series where we're going through and testing all the weapons inside of Modern Warfare 3 to see how viable these weapons are for us to be using inside of our Modern Warfare 3 Zombies games. This is going to include the aftermarket parts, the aftermarket conversion kits, as well as the MW2 weapons. So if you guys are new around here and you'd like to see how weapons perform inside of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, make sure you're subscribed, make sure those bell notifications are turned on so you're not going to miss out any future uploads from myself on Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. As well, don't forget, as we grow, I'm able to give back so uh, the next goal is 4,000 subscribers on the channel and when we hit that that will unlock our very next black ops 6 giveaway as well down below in the description you will find the link for my streams I stream on Mondays and Thursdays 6 p.m. Pacific 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and generally have a ton of fun over there playing everything from custom zombies to other zombie related games it's just a ton of fun hope to see you guys there to come and hang out now in today's video brings us, to, brings us to something that I truly enjoy doing and something that uh, you all have set the bar very high for and that is running a viewer suggestion. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a handgun that was suggested me, for me to run with the aftermarket conversion kit the Core 45. So we're going to take a look today at this handgun with the XRK a bunch of other numbers V2 conversion kit for the Core 45 handgun. So we're going to be taking it through all three tiers taking on bounty contracts all the way through to see just how viable this weapon is for us to be using inside of our modern warfare 3 zombies games so hopefully by the end of today's video you have a really good feel for how the core 45 with the xrk conversion kit performs inside of modern warfare 3 zombies and whether or not the core 45 with the conversion kit is going to be a weapon that's a viable option for you to be using inside of your modern warfare 3 zombies games so without further ado let's get to the core 45 with the x XRK conversion kit review video today. All right, welcome in to another video. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I truly appreciate the support. Now, in today's video, we're going to be doing a viewer suggestion, which was a handgun, the Core 45, with the XRK conversion kit on there. We have the molten obsidian camo on there, as that was unlocked. As uh, I guess the uh, pistol given to you in Get Higher is the Core 45. Um, so I knocked out molten obsidian while getting the camos unlocked on the Get Higher event. So truly awesome to see. I love that camo. I think it's amazing. So when we spawn in and do the weapon testing videos, I throw on all of my perks um, with no additions to the weapon to make it any stronger whatsoever. As a mouse and, mouse and keyboard player though, um, I do run Deadshot Daiquiri as I uh, enjoy the extra critical damage it gives us on mouse and keyboard as we do not get the ADS snap. So then we go off and grab our first bounty inside of tier one to find out how the core 45 with this XRK aftermarket conversion kit will perform at white rarity, non pack a punched and no tools or ammo mods on it against the bounty inside of tier one. And uh, right there was when I realized that I did not bring in decoys with me today on this run. I had the experimental gas grenades equipped as I was testing some things out in the unstable rift and completely forgot to equip decoys um, which was quite the struggle uh, in this run today so stick through and uh, see if you guys can notice throughout the video where I was struggling and uh, with using the experimental gas instead of having decoys so after that we went and visited the pack-a-punch machine if you don't know just melee the pack-a-punch machine before using it or pop crystals and you'll keep your camo on your gun for the rest of the run unless you dip into the dark ether or the unstable rift as you lose your camo inside of those so we picked up our second bounty of the day inside of tier one this time we're still white rarity we uh, still have no ammo mods and no tools but we are packed and what a difference the damage output made just taking the core 45 with this aftermarket conversion kit to just pack level one seeing how we you know easily handled our second bounty inside of tier tier one i really was eager to throw on my uh, legendary tool and napalm burst today as i was interested to see if shatter blast was actually the ammo mod that was giving me a lot more plates inside of tier three um so i i wanted to try out uh, napalm burst which was my favorite to see if i was going to be running out of plates and struggling to find plates inside of tier three using napalm burst versus the shatter blast i've been using recently so now here we are inside of tier one, uh, pack one, legendary with napalm, and like just no chance, <laughs> no chance. 
that uh, bounty just got absolutely wrecked. So I, at this point, was eager to push into Tier 2, um, keeping the Core 45 with this aftermarket conversion kit um, at the damage output that it was at. You know, I didn't really feel the need to increase its output because of how well it handled the last bounty we had inside of Tier 1. So here we are. We got our bounty inside of Tier 2, a Disciple. Yay. Well, I, just to point out, when I first found this Disciple, he was up on the bridge inside of Tier 2. I had to wait for him to drop back down. Um, here we are inside of the Experimental Gas. Although I did notice the Experimental Gas keeps the Disciple stationary, um, which was nice to see. I did not I did not know that. Um, let me know if you guys knew that down below in the comments. But uh, it, it will freeze your Disciple in place if you throw a Experimental Gas Grenade at him, which I didn't know. So that was really kind of cool to see, but I could definitely see the damage was was there when I was able to hit the critical shots on uh, this Disciple Bounty contract inside of Tier 2. Being only Pack 1 Legendary, I wasn't really struggling too much to deal damage to the Disciple as much as I was having an issue with, you know, uh, the congestion and the riffraff that was around while I was dealing with the Disciple. That was more of a struggle than the actual Bounty itself. Good loot out of that contract. We got a Pop 2 Crystal and an Epic Tool, so that was awesome to see so the next thing to do was to head off and grab another bounty contract inside of tier 2 but this time before we went off um, I put on my pap 2 crystal that I brought in with me um, because I was curious to see if pap 2 uh, bounty in tier 2 is going to be um, easy work like our uh, last bounty contract was inside of tier 1 and today I tell you it's disciple day inside of modern warfare 3 zombie let me know if you had a bunch of disciples for your bounty contract today because this was pretty much all I was getting today. Kind of made me wish I brought in uh, Deadwire to be honest with you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, we used the uh, experimental gas grenades as I found out that they were keeping the disciple in place which was awesome. And uh, here you can see the struggle uh, for plates has already begun inside of tier 2. I was having an issue coming up with plates. Um, it wasn't an issue dealing out damage with the Core 45. I found that this weapon is definitely a viable option to be using inside of our games. Like it was really strong. I was feeling really confident with it as far as uh, dealing damage to the zombies. As you can see right there, it's just not much of an issue at all to dish out damage to the zombies. I wasn't concerned about that. So I wanted to go off into Tier 3 now and see, um, you know, was there... How does this do inside of Tier 3? Uh, we had to visit the Pack-A-Bunch machine today as I was completely out of PAP 3 crystals for this run. So I was kind of hoping to be able to get to a ritual possibly and uh, maybe re-up and uh, resupply myself with some PAP 3 crystals and legendary tools. Now normally when I come in, if the rituals are available, I kind of will grab maybe one or two as a maximum. Um, there are, is a rare time when I will try and take all three of them when I'm in desperate need of supplies for my stash. Uh, so that is one of the few times I will do that. I don't like to try and take all three of them just in case other players can come in here and they may need to get one. Uh, so that's that's my thoughts on that. But today we, we made it to pack a punch inside of tier three. I went to the Wonder Fizz. We grabbed the rest of the perks that we needed. So now we're rocking all perks inside of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies in Tier 3, which was awesome. We had no plates, and I was definitely feeling the plate struggle today. Um, let me tell you. So I was running here after getting my perks, like I always do, to try and check and see if this ritual was available. And I could hear it. It was available. So I was super, super happy. As, like I said, I came in here without a PAP 3 crystal. And I did have a legendary tool today, but I didn't have PAP 3. So I was really excited to be able to get this ritual done and uh, to be able to stow a PAP 3 crystal to exfil with, which was a bit nice, you know, to put it in my stash. Uh, I know we all definitely enjoy getting PAP 3 crystals and legendary tools in our loot to either apply in our run or uh, stow for the next run for sure. Plus, this was a great opportunity to show you guys how viable the Core 45 is with the XRK aftermarket conversion kit as when we do this ritual, all of the zombies come at us in one direction. We've got standard tier 3 zombies coming at us. We have armored zombies in tier 3. Um, down below there was a mangler who came up here. Uh, so it's definitely a great option to show you guys the damage and whether or not this weapon is something that can be viable for us to be using inside of tier 3. Now I was checking the TAC map. Like I said, I wanted to see if there was a chance to get possibly another ritual as my stash was really low for 
pop three crystals and so i was kind of eager to be able to take as many of these rituals as i could in this run as my stash was empty i know i feel a little bit bad about it but uh, it's definitely something that i needed to do and like i said it's not something i do all the time so i don't feel too bad about it but it's not the greatest to try and take all the rituals inside of your game and then we made it over to uh the second one and i was surprised to see this one was here as well so I definitely took advantage of that. Like I said, I was really low on my stash. So I wanted to make sure I got, uh, you know, some stuff to put in my stash for at least a couple runs. Um, so that possibly, you know, during those next couple runs where I'm, I'm, I've got the good gear, I can possibly get some stuff out of loot just from doing regular contracts and not having to go back uh, and re-grab these rituals again. So it was nice to see for sure. Also figured it was a great opportunity to show you guys just, you know, how to complete these rituals if you haven't already done it. If you didn't know, this is how I go ahead and get these rituals done. Um, a nice opportunity to dip in there and check the loot. There was a freaking ray gun in that crate. What? I, a ray gun in a crate. Pretty impressive loot for tier 3. I didn't want a ray gun, so I just kind of left that there. Um, and then there was another crate right here. I figured I'd check that before we activated our ritual. That's where you go to activate this one. You just stand in there and uh, confirm the triangle or what have you. And then I had another player come up. He didn't ask to join. Uh, didn't ask anything at all. He just completed the ritual for me, um, which was kind of nice. So I grabbed the loot and uh, it was time to move on. <laughs> um, I wanted to show crowd control inside of tier three with the uh, core 45, the XRK aftermarket conversion kit at uh, tier three legendary with napalm how does this handgun perform inside of tier three dealing with crowd control um you can see on screen that it, it is definitely a viable option for crowd control inside of tier three we have a standard hvt coming at us not much of an issue we have armored zombies we have partially armored zombies we have standard zombies we have sprinters and uh, the core 45 you can see the carnage with the dna strands from the zombies that we shot on screen so i definitely feel like that um, pretty much speaks for itself for the core 45 as far as crowd control definitely going to be a viable option to be using if you need to you know dish out a bunch of damage in a hurry and uh you know d take out a bunch of zombies the core 45 with this conversion kit is definitely something that will work for you and then we picked up a bounty contract inside of tier 3 which was a disciple yay and i was happy to see uh another team in here helping me with this disciple as uh, like i said i forgot decoy i've been unable to find them on this run also inside of any loot or um, any caches or whatever i was able to open up and check i was not able to find decoys in this run which was pretty pretty crazy i'm usually able to find decoys either zombies drop them or uh, they're inside you know uh loot or a container or something like that but not this run at all uh, which was really a bit of a struggle because I wasn't able to control the riffraff as far as, uh, you know, pushing them aside or, or moving them to a location so that I can isolate the bounty contract and get rid of that. So it was definitely a struggle. And you can see the plates issue is definitely a, a thing I felt today um, in that I was not running Shatter Blast. And I had been running Shatter Blast in my previous videos recently, and I was not having an issue with plates inside of Tier 3 running Shatter Blast. Uh, this run we're using napalm and uh, i definitely definitely noticed the lack of plates falling from zombies i had shot um, throughout this run uh, let me know what you guys feel is the best ammo mod for you know helping out with creating armor plates off of what you've killed inside of tier 3 or in your games in general um, i just feel like shatter blast is the way to go right now and i'm not sure why that is and if that'll be changed uh when season five drops but uh for right now i believe if you need armor plates in tier three run shatter blast but you can see here we're definitely able to dish out the damage the, the critical shots on the core 45 to this disciple are definitely dishing out the damage for sure again he was just siphoning health and then it was back to the critical shots. Even the uh, other player that was helping, we were just it, it, being a bullet sponge disciples. Very annoying. Jumped up and down to, you know, let them know thank you for the help. I appreciated that. We got a sigil out of there, which was awesome to see. At this point, my loot was pretty full. So it was time to go and see our good friend Pedro, the palace protector. Although, although, in the comments, I have been told that this is, um, I can't remember the name, but it's the bathhouse uh guardian here and pedro the palace protector is up at the raid weapon stash contract so uh i'm not too sure we, we might have to reconsider and uh, change the names of our mega abominations 
Now we're going to go with Pedro today and we managed to get him over here to the uh, billboard cheese spot which shows you an awesome uh, amount of damage that each critical shot does to uh, Mega Abomination's health bar. As you hit the critical shots you can see it's very substantial the damage that you're getting with each critical shot with this core 45 and the aftermarket conversion kit. So it definitely feels like this is something that is viable. So we dealt with Pedro. It's time to go off and see George the Guardian. Wait. What? Where? Where did he go? That was no bueno. I was not okay with that. George, what are you doing? We didn't even get a chance to say hi. Anyway, I went and then about tier three for a little bit, made it back over, and George had come back. Welcome back, buddy. George, the guardian of the arches, was down for a fight today. Here, I he charged me. He charged me over at the... Uh, platform stairs here and then chomped me while I was trying to go up the stairs which knocked me off. I'm telling you George and Pedro are forming a scheme to take us down and I'm not okay with that. Um, let me know what you guys think on this whole George Pedro uh, Mega Abomination scenario in the comments below. This, this needs to be solved. I'm not sure what's going on. And now we have you know Hank King of the Hill over there shouting out other instructions to the Mega Abomination School. So I I'm not sure what's going on with the Megas inside of Tier 3, but I do believe they are working together. All right, so George here was firing up his laser attack. We were definitely able to do a ton of damage to him. I, like I said, was struggling as I didn't have decoy, so I wasn't able to kind of keep all the riffraff down below the stairs and just uh, focus fire in on uh, George and his laser attacks. In fact, at this point here, I had to back up for uh, the horde because of the laser attacks and just the amount of riffraff that was coming up the stairs that we also had a disciple down at the bottom of the stairs which was making all the zombies that much stronger super fun to deal with i love disciples they always seem to be third partying i'm not sure why they they feel the need to do that i mean they're annoying enough on their own they do not need to be third party but we were able to finish off George, the Guardian, the Arches right there. Fairly easy work uh, using the uh, stairs here with the, uh, the platform to funnel all of the riffraff towards us and uh, keep George firing up his laser attack below. So it was definitely not much of a struggle to deal with that. Went off and grabbed the loot from George. He dropped me an incredible jug suit, but as you can see, my stash was 100% full in my backpack today. Not my stash, sorry. So I did not have any room for a jug suit. Plus, I already had one equipped. So I did not feel the need to go ahead and grab that one. And then I went to check my tack map and noticed that the storm had already been moving and was on its way. So it was time to head off to an exfil. And uh, we had to exfil through the gas, which was uh, a little unexpected. But I do have to say at the end of this video to let you know uh, my final thoughts and feelings on the Core 45 with the XRK aftermarket conversion kit. Is it a viable weapon for us to be using inside of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies? Yes, 100%. I believe this is a viable weapon for us to be using inside of our games. Definitely dishes out the damage for sure. Tons of fun to use. You got all the mobility as it is a pistol as well. Now the aftermarket conversion kit will... Um, so when you pull the trigger, you're going to shoot. And when you release the trigger, it's going to shoot as well. So that's what the aftermarket aftermarket conversion kit does for the core 45 handgun amazing run with the loot i got today uh super happy with that now let's work together down below in the comment section to make any changes to the build that i ran today that's on screen right now so that we all have an amazing build to use on the core 45 uh handgun with the xrk ipv2 conversion kit uh, <laughs> Um, so that we can work together and come up with an awesome build together. Um, and then just so you guys wanted to know what camo it was, like I said, it is the Molten Obsidian. So if you go to your camos, it's under Weapon Prestige and it is the second one unlocked. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you guys in the next one.